This is the final class of the most extensive church history classes that I've ever done. Usually there's two classes a week, two of 50 minutes a week, and by whatever, how many weeks there are in a, in a school year, and they do two of them per week. This class covers just about two years of church history. There's 130 classes in this. And at this time, we're reading the Bogard-McPherson debate, the end of the classes. The, uh, the Bogard-McPherson debate was quite a debate back in those days. The McPhersonites, the followers of Amy McPherson, and McPherson is the mother of the Foursquare Church and of the Calvary Chapel, fastest growing churches in the world. Ben Bogard at that time was a leader. He still has followers today all over the world. But Amy McPherson really outran him because of the experiences of the emotionalism in that group appeals to the flesh. As simple as that. Bible doctrines and truths is something that people aren't even interested in today. They're not even interested in it, and yet it is the very foundation. You wouldn't have a Bible in your hands if it wasn't for Baptist. Now, I said Pastor Billy Roberts, uh, he wrote this book called Taking the Confusion Out of Tongues, The Origin of Tongues, Language and Speech. Most of all, the English word for tongues in the Bible can be translated a language. Moses prophesied in an unknown tongue would be a sign to Israel. These are the different things. Hebrew apostles faced the challenge of going to all nations when they had a language problem. This is some of the things that, that uh, uh, Billy Roberts discussed. The apostles received an instant grammar education, making them more than common orators, but masters in science and phonetics. We hear every man speaking in his own language where they were born. What happened on the day of Pentecost was not talking in unknown tongues, it was an unconfusion of tongues. What happened here at Babylon, here, when the language was confused, it brought people back before they were confused. Well, so how it happened? Now, the only thing we got left here is Amy McPherson's answer to Bogart. So I'm giving you a little bit of extra here in this. And uh, tongues of fire was the initial evidence of spirit baptism. All of this. Now, first of all, people, individuals, were not baptized in the Holy Ghost, so to speak. The church was in one place, in one accord, in Jerusalem. Jesus told the church, you all go there, the church now, not individuals, you all go there, and when you're in, and receive power from on high, now, when Solomon's temple was built, and when the tabernacle was built, the tabernacle, of course, built before Solomon's temple, when it was all finished, then the Shekinah glory of God came and took possession of it and immersed the tabernacle in the Shekinah glory of God, and there was flames of fire, the pillar of fire at nighttime, and the temple of Solomon did the same thing. Now, what happened... <clears throat> this is my sixth message today. See if I can keep my voice going. What happened on the day of Pentecost is what happened on Solomon's temple and what happened in the tabernacle. God took possession of that and they saw the, all of these people, the whole church was absolutely immersed in the Shekinah glory of God and they saw like the pillar of fire at night, they saw flames of fire on all the church members' heads as a church, not as individuals. Now, the only time we have a, a, what we might call the baptism of the Holy Ghost or baptism of the Spirit was when the church was immersed there. And then later on, there was a lot of bigotry among the Jews in the church. And um, Peter was told to go down to Caesarea to Cornelius' household. And when he got down there, these people were immersed. The church was immersed in the Holy Spirit. Again, God took possession of that church and said, I've already taken possession of this church, now baptizing. God 
baptized him in, 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 in his Holy Spirit or a Shekinah glory before they were even baptized with water. Period. said, now who can forbid water, who can forbid baptism that these people since the Holy Spirit has already added them to the church? Simple as that. Now those are some of the things. Uh, talking in tongues was not a talking in a gibberish. Yeah, Acts 16, 16, we saw a girl there in, in demonic uh, activity where she spoke in an unknown language to her prophets and they interpreted for people and they were prophecies. This was paganism, paganism. The unknown languages came from paganism, not Christianity. On the Mount Carmel, when, they, when the prophets of all were prophesying, they were talking in unknown languages. This is the sign of demonic activity. The places in the Bible where we see this, it's demonic activity. Unknown language was a mistranslation from in the King James Version. It is language. A language. With a glossary, with a dictionary. A language. When people, when the churches went out and talked to different, when the members of the church, the apostles, deacons, whoever went out, preachers, they spoke to these people in their own languages whether they knew how to do it or not. And Paul said, I spoke in more languages than anybody. And even the language of angels. Because he was dead and carried up into the seventh heaven. And he saw up there, he saw Christ and all of this, and he went down, he couldn't, he said, there's things up there I couldn't even tell you about. And now we got people dying and going to heaven and come back and telling everybody about it. Paul said he couldn't do it. All right, let's go now. To page 44 and we have Amy Simple McPherson's re reply to Ben Bogard this is her closing speech I guess you notice the little, this little whispering in the platform I turned to the chairman and said that I had brought up some witnesses to that's by as to the healing and they said I would be breaking the rules of debate and they said I would be introducing new evidence Finally, they have agreed in so far as Dr. Bogart introduced the three whom he says are not healed, I will call you as my jury, and he said a little girl with braces, the man with a crutch, and the tacket boy would be fair for me to introduce three who were healed. And they all scream and holler, amen, and applause all over the place. Her followers. I will introduce one who has had been for 20 years a member of Brother Bogart's church until recently, Mrs. E.W. O.T., of 3001 Arkansas Avenue. She was an organist and taught in the Sunday school. This turns out to be a total lie. Not true at all. Mr. Bogart, she is a member of my church. Mr. Bogart, she is not a member of my church and never has been. He answered that right then. Miss McPherson, the sister, says 25 years ago she was an organist and worker there. Mrs. Odie, I came here with 25 years ago. I joined the First Baptist Church in North Little Rock, Arkansas, and Brother Bargar was pastor at that time. And then we moved over to Little Rock, and I attended the First Methodist Church in the 7th of Louisiana. At 7th of Louisiana. Now, I'm going to tell you something. No real Baptist is going to go to a Methodist Church, are they, Marilyn? No, you should take your head, no. I was a member there until I went to Memphis. I can prove that what I say at by Dr. H.L. White, 2210 and a half Main Street, North Little Rock, Arkansas. I had a cancer on my nose, and Dr. McDonald, 1106 Cumberland Street, two years ago, said I had a cancer on my nose, and he wanted to take it off. I didn't have the price. I had never met Mrs. McPherson. I asked her to pray that it be healed, and they began to draw and draw, and they both dropped off this morning, and this is the third day. There was a cancer here, indicating where. I have given you my address and my doctor's name and my husband was at the Baptist Hospital as financial secretary for two or three years. Mrs. McDonald, 104 East Washington, a member of the First Christian Church. My baby was paralyzed from six months of age. She is four and a half. And when I brought her to sister, she could not raise her arm up. And when I... Uh, would go to dress her, it was, it was in great pain, and now she can raise her arm up to the little child. Raise your arm up, and the child raises her arm. This little thumb was drawn inward in the palm of her hand, and then Jesus uh, touched them, and they immediately straightened out. She can now open her hand wide. Praise the Lord. 
Her left hand and the fingers were a quarter of an inch shorter than those on her right. Then she was healed, they immediately became the same length. Every person in the house and the audience who knows me stand up. Several stand up. Mrs. McPherson, Reverend Roy Jordan, third and Pulaski pastor of the Capitol View of Methodist Church, has sent this testimony that he was instantly healed by prayer of bad rupture. Mrs. McPherson, so tonight I rest my case. Dear Brother Bogart, may God bless you and I may never see you again. Jesus does answer prayer for the sick and so tonight before I say goodnight and goodbye to North Little Rock, and the folks here, those who believe in Jesus, do not answer prayer for the sick. I will, I will, will you vote for Bogard by standing in a body? And some stood up. How many not know? Dr. Bogard, this is not the subject of the debate. Miss McPherson, how many does not believe or do not believe that dying healing cease with the apostolic age? Stand up. And will those who believe as Dr. At Bogart, that miracles and divine healing cease with the apologies, please stand. Some stood. Now, all, will all of those who believe that Jesus still answers prayer and heals the sick signify by standing? Many stood up and they applauded, and time was out. The healing testimony was refuted. Mrs. E.W. Odie, whom Mrs. McPherson paraded before the congregation contrary to the rule of the debate, which forbids new matter to be brought into the final neg negative, testify, as seen above, that she was cured of cancer and by Mrs. McPherson's prayer that Dr. D. H. L. White had failed to cure her and that her case was pronounced cancer by Dr. McDonald. Here are the facts. Dr. H. L. White, whose address Mrs. Odie gave in her testimony, is a reputable longtime doctor of North Little Rock. He was asked the following questions, and the question and answers are given below, exactly as asked. Dr. White, did you treat Mrs. E.W. Odie for cancer and fail to cure? What are the facts? I treated Mrs. Odie for some warts on her face. Warts on her face. They were not cancers. I used an electric needle and told her that from two to four days the warts would drop off. My treatment was successful because just four days after I applied the electric needle, she went to Miss McPherson and was prayed for, and the warts did drop off, as she said, and just as I told her they would when I treated her. I was present in the tabernacle when she made this statement, and someone asked me why I did not get up and contradict her. I did not want to get into trouble by facing the mob and decided to keep still, but I told several before leaving the tabernacle that I cured her and Miss McPherson got the credit for it. But it was not cancer. Incidentally, I have not been paid for the treatment and the thanks I got was to be advertised as a failure. That is Dr. White's testimony and here is Dr. McDonald, or Dr. McDonald's testimony. During the debate, Mrs. Amy McPherson and Dr. Bogart at Temple in North Little Rock, and saw it was asserted over the radio that I had examined a certain Mrs. Odie and pronounced her case cancer. That I had made a certificate diagnosis of a facial cancer, I wish to correct this statement. I wish to say that I never at any time examined Mrs. Odie, nor did I ever pronounce her case as cancer, nor to the best of my knowledge and belief did this woman ever have cancer. I know this woman. And I see her, but she never was a patient of mine, and at any time, neither did I ever make an examination of her. The statement attributed to me of her having cancer on her face is false, and without any foundation whatsoever. This statement I make out of fairness to all concerned. This statement was not solicited by Dr. Borgard or anyone else, but was made voluntarily by myself to correct a wrong impression brought on the audience. And respectfully, E.B. McDonald. Thus claims are proved to be false. As to the little paralyzed girl that was paralyzed, she still is paralyzed. Her mother claimed that she had been helped by Mrs. McPherson, but the child is still paralyzed. If that is the sort of evidence that Mrs. McPherson has, it must be ever her best, for she picked out just three from all the great number who claimed to have been healed, and certainly it had been taken for granted that she picked the best evidence that she had, and then follows that all of her claims to be doing such wonderful things fell flat. 
It is ranked fraud. Such fraud should be exposed, and that is the purpose of this debate and these statements from reputable doctors. The many people who voted for with Mrs. Verson were no doubt convinced that she was right by this fraudulent testimony. They were not influenced by the Bible arguments. They were made, but would take the testimony of false witnesses, taking the word of men instead of the word of God. Reverend Roy Jordan positively denies sending Miss McPherson any word at all about being healed. And so that is another fraudulent claim. Now Dr. Bogart goes on and, and he, he, in more depth here, he, for about uh, 49 to 64, he gives other biblical evidence for what he talked about. I hope that you have enjoyed these church history classes up to this 130. I thought I would finalize it with the Bogart and McPherson debate. I could go into more detail forever and teach church history. But uh, I think that you got the gist from the time of Jesus and the seashores of Galilee all the way down to the present age. Amy McPherson churches are still out there. The old landmark missionary Baptist churches are still out there. The Southern Baptist church is still out there. The Bible Baptist churches, Free Will Baptist churches, which are not Baptist at all. They're all still out there. Episcopalians are there. The Presbyterians are there. The Methodists are there. All these churches, and if you look up here on the map, you'll see where I only came from. There's only one church that goes all the way back to the seashore of Galilee, and those are the Baptist churches that are known as Baptist churches today. They were known as Anabaptists all the way back. They were called Mon Mon Monetists, Novatians, Puritans, Paterines, Cathari. They were called Christians. They were called Paulicians. They were called Waldenses. They were called uh, Arnoldists, Albigenses, Enrations, Waldenses. All the way down to America, they came to all the lands and the earth that covered the earth, from the Middle East all the way to America. I brought you through America from England. We came to America from Germany, Russia, China, Switzerland, Sweden, all of these people over there. They and Baptists in history were offered the chance to be a state church in many places, but they wouldn't do it. They had one place in America where they established a free religious colony, and that was in Rhode Island. They established two churches there originally, Roger Williams and Dr. John Clark. Those churches, I think, are still in existence today, at least the church houses are where you can see them back in Rhode Island. God's people have gone through all the world. They've gone through a lot of torture. They shed a lot of blood. The title of this thing here is called the Trail of Blood. It is a trail of blood. Baptists wrote their history in blood. I could take all the way from there, which is 10 foot tall, all the way from that point to time, all the way, and then down, all the way to the floor. And that is 12 foot, from there to there. And then all the way to the floor are Baptist and church histories. What I've given to you is a compilation of all that information. I hope that you use it. I hope that you enjoy it. I hope that it helped you and deciding who you are in the world today and what you are in the world today. Real Baptists believe in the succession from the time of Christ. The authority was handed down. They practice the basic doctrines of the Bible, this little old book that I wrote so many years ago, Doctrines of the Bible. Bogard wrote this one called The Golden Key to Bible Analysis, How to Study the Bible. I taught systematic theology, God's eternal purpose, 
the greatness of the kingdom, and these are hundreds of classes. I've taught every book in the New Testament from Greek, in Greek reading and research classes. I've preached 